I know what you're thinking. Look, the best teams in the NHL don't have one phase of the franchise. They have a bunch of great players who come together to play great at the same time and win the team as Stanley Cup or go far in the playoffs. See Tampa Bay with Braden Point, Steven Stamkos, Kucherov, Vasilevsky, take your pick. Okay, but there's always one guy who stands out among the rest. With the Pittsburgh Penguins, it's Sidney Crosby. With the Blackhawks, it was Patrick Kane. With the Washington Capitals, do I even need to say it? Okay, Alex Ovechkin, obviously. So this, look, being a first overall pick in any market, you're coming in with pressure. You're expected to be the face of the franchise. But going into Montreal, and he's getting drafted in Montreal... And I know there's scouts who, old scouts, who are possibly saying that he couldn't go first overall like Grant McKegg, but look at the Habs scouting the past, whatever, 10, 15 years, how awful it's been. Can you really trust a guy, a scout like Greg McKegg, who's saying that Shane Wright is not going to be that good? I, I don't think so, okay? To me, that almost means that he's going to be great if uh, this old Habs scout is saying that he's not going to be. But I'm more interested in seeing how this kid's going to handle the pressure. Okay, is he going to be similar to an Austin Matthews type where playing in Toronto doesn't phase him at all and he can go score 60 goals first overall pick, no problem, ice in his veins? Or is he going to be, look, last video I compared, compared in quotation marks to Neil Yakupov. It wasn't really, I was just comparing to previous situations, not player to player. But is he going to be like a previous first overall pick where the pressure might get to him and it's going to be tougher to, to perform and tougher to produce? That's what I want to know. And a lot of people pointed out, he's not arrogant, he's a good leader, he seems like he's cool, calm, collected, and poised, which is a great sign and something that could really help him in Mon Montreal y'all which is one of the if not the biggest hockey market in the world man here's the interesting thing though Montreal when they get a guy who can start scoring it does not take long look at Cole Caulfield okay he, his first like 10 games he started scoring goals and then his playoff performance last year and all of a sudden I see him everywhere on billboards commercials uh his jersey and shirt is everywhere in the bell center he is marketed as this star and he hadn't really done that much. And for the first half of this past year, it kind of bit them because they were marketing this guy as, oh, this could be a potential face of the franchise, him and Nick Suzuki. And then Caulfield struggled so much so that they set him down to the minors, okay? So th that's not a knock on Caulfield or the Habs. I'm just saying that Montreal fans and the marketing over there is very quick to anoint to the next Montreal Canadian superstar. They're very quick to do it. So... I mean, I will not be surprised if as soon as he gets drafted, he's going to start to get marketed heavily around the Montreal area, and everyone who's a Habs fan is going to start to anoint him as that. And is he going to be that? That's going to be tough to see. And look, he's going up against Carey Price, who is going to be, if he even plays, he's going to be one of the faces of the franchise. But because of his age and his constant injury status... They're looking and hungry for somebody new to take the mantle as face of the franchise. I will say though, guys, I'm nervous for the kid. I really, really am because the pressure, the expectations coming in before he's even played a game in the NHL, the hype is going to be real. He's going to have been stopped 800 million times on the street by Montreal fans before even touching the ice as a hab. I think that the pressure is going to be really 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 big on the kid and some guys they falter when that happens I'm not saying it's going to happen with him I'm just saying that it's a very real possibility he is a human being it does happen to some people now look Connor McDavid Austin Matthews they're guys who no matter what market they would have been thrown into they would have thrived they would have succeeded but not everybody is like that and you can't tell me 100% definitively that Shane Wright is or isn't like that and this is interesting because this is where something like the World Juniors comes in handy. Playing on one of the biggest stages that hockey has to offer, if you can come in clutch and perform for a short period of time, it's not like, oh my god, yes, he can succeed, or oh my god, he's going to fail, but it gives you a good indicator of how he'll do on the big stage with one of the biggest hockey markets, biggest sports markets in North America. It will give you an idea. So, Habs fans... What did I just say? <laughs> Habs fans, keep an eye on big events that Wright is going to be playing on, like the World Juniors. That will give you a hint as to what's to come there. As far as being face of the franchise, we know he's going to have to compete with Cole Caulfield, who Habs fans are in love with. 
okay, this kid, we they love him. And, and his kind of new bond with St. Louis as the coach has been great to see. And look how many goals he scored to finish off his rookie season after really struggling the first half. He's on his way to being a superstar. He very well might be the guy, the Patrick Kane of the team. And then maybe Wright and Suzuki, for that matter, who's the other guy that Habs fans absolutely adore, are in love with. Just not, And again, it's not just on-ice stuff. It's off-ice Okay, it's how you are with the community, how personable you are, uh, if you're marketable enough, like you have a nice enough smile, and are you friendly enough, and do do you put smiles on people's faces when they see your face? It's stuff like that. I know it's not necessarily smart, but that's what marketing is, guys. That's what happens. And if he's boring as a stick, they're not going to market him as much as guys like Caulfield and Suzuki, who've shown their personality, have great like marketable social skills and are already on their way to becoming leaders with this Habs team. Now, is he 100% not going to be the face of the franchise? No. And again, that's what I've been saying here. First overall pick, like, he's got an advantage. Trust me, the first overall pick in how many years in Montreal? He's got an advantage, but he's going to have to work for it, and we'll see. I think he's got a chance, but at the end of the day, if you want my final answer, I think the guy, when people think Montreal Canadiens for the next 10 years, Cole Caulfield.